Okay, students, I'm going to go over how to write equations given a position time graph. So the two basic equations that you most likely need to write um, are on the AP equation table, and they are initial position equals, or pardon me, final position equals initial position plus initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. So let's start with that one. Um, the initial position we can read right off of the graph here. The object starts at zero meters. And then initially, the graph is really flat. It looks like a parabola, really flat. So we're going to say that x initial is zero meters. and initial velocity is zero meters a second, where we inferred that from the fact that a tangent line that touches the graph at zero, zero would be horizontal. So then I just need to figure out the acceleration. I don't know what that is, but I know what the first two terms are. They're just gonna go away, but I do need to know the acceleration. Well, if I look at the graph, I can see that the object changed position from zero to 100 meters in 10 seconds. So we can say that delta x over the whole graph is 100 meters, positive direction to the right, and delta t is 10 seconds. So I, actually, I can actually use those values in this equation to determine acceleration. And then I can figure out how to write the equation in a general form. So let's just do that. We'll go over here on the left and we'll say, well, x equals one half, I should say, change in x, it's fine. Or x would be okay as well in this case because the initial position is zero. But I'll, I'll write change in x since I wrote change in x on the right. Displacement or change in position equals one half acceleration times change in time squared. So 100 meters equals one half acceleration times 10 seconds, that quantity squared. Well, that's going to be 100 over 100 when I rearrange the equation, and that will be times 2. So I can just look at that, and I can say acceleration must equal 2 meters a second squared. So now I can go back to the general form, and I can rewrite that. We can say that x, final position, must equal 1 half times 2 meters a second squared times t squared. And it's nice to put units on that in second squared and meters. So there's one example. Now we need to write an acceleration function. So let me erase some of this. And I'll do that. So here's our position function. X in meters equals one half times two meters a second squared times time in second squared. I want to find a velocity function, which would be of this form. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Well. I already found out what acceleration is. It's two, and we deduced that the initial velocity was zero. So we can just quickly rewrite this and say, well, it must be, I'm gonna go ahead and put a zero in, which I didn't do last time, that's okay. Zero plus two meters a second squared times time in seconds. Oh, I forgot, I like to put a little parentheses around the units. Okay, so that's writing from, um, a position time graph. We'll look at writing from a velocity time graph in just a second. Okay, so now I'll do another example. Given a velocity time graph, write equations for position time and velocity time. So now let's look at this uh, graph. Notice that it has two phases of the motion. This first phase from zero seconds to two seconds, that is constant velocity. 
and then from two seconds to four seconds, that's constant acceleration. So we've got to do two different things here. We've got to write some equations for constant velocity and some for constant acceleration. So for constant velocity, if I want to write a position time equation, um, I don't know where this object started from this graph, so I'll just leave displacement as delta x and not write initial and final because I don't know what initial is. So delta x equals the velocity times time because the acceleration is zero. So that must just equal four meters a second times time in seconds. And then for velocity as a function of time, well, the velocity is just always four meters a second. So there's no need for any time variable. That's relatively easy. So I'll erase that. So we can talk about the equations for the accelerated part of the motion. So now we know that the acceleration only happens from two seconds to four seconds. I probably should have put a time on there before when I wrote the um, equations for constant velocity, but I'll do it here. Um, T equals two seconds to t equals four seconds. That's an indication that my, my equation, as far as I know, is only valid for, those, um, for that period of time, that time interval. So now we need to know a couple of things. Um, remember, we can't know the initial position from the velocity time graph. So we're just going to write it in terms of displacement, not in terms of initial and final position. But we can know the initial velocity. Vx naught would be four meters a second at two seconds. So we can go ahead and write that four meters a second. That's the instantaneous velocity at two seconds. And then we'll write a time variable times t in seconds. And then I need to know the acceleration. I don't know that, but the acceleration is the slope of the line. Well, I can calculate that with delta V over delta T. If I look at the line, it ends at zero. So zero minus four meters a second over four seconds minus two seconds. So that would be negative four over two, or A is negative two meters a second squared. I could just also infer that by looking at the graph and thinking about it. But I'll go ahead and write it here. I'm going to use a parentheses, negative two meters a second squared. Let's erase this and move it all away because my equation is getting a little crowded. And then t squared, where t is in second squared. So now I've got the position as a, as a function of time equation. And I can easily write the velocity as a function of time equation. That would be valid from t equals two seconds to t equals four seconds. So final velocity must equal initial velocity. We decided that was four meters a second. Plus acceleration, we calculated, calculated that as negative two meters a second squared times time in seconds. So there are the two equations. Thanks for watching. Remember what one fool can learn, another can.